Have you ever let a six-year-old watch Beavis freak out and turn into Cornholio? <laughs> I am Cornholio. I need picada for my bunghole. Hello, friends, and welcome back to Red Hex, your source for the freshest daily Reddit content on the internet. Oh, it's so musical. It's such a wonderful day. Yes, indeed. We've got Witchfinger returning. <laughs> I really enjoyed his last story where two beards basically just uh, insulted the crap out of each other. Somehow that video didn't end up getting demonetized, which is absolutely amazing. So we're going to go ahead and dive into another one of his stories because he's a good writer. I'd really like to make him like a regular installation on the channel. He's got some series going. I think this particular tale is is a one-off, but that's okay. Just a little taste while we get some other series wrapped. Uh, honestly, World War Wee, Bourgeois Beard, both coming out at a relatively slow clip. Uh, no rush, of course, but maybe we do need to get some other series in here to, to fill in the gaps in the meanwhile. I don't want to have too much stuff going at the same time, because that might get a little bit messy if multiple people are posting at once, but uh, I'm sure people won't mind waiting for uh, this part or that part. And of course, I know the comment section and the people in the Discord don't hesitate to tell me when it's been too long. They're like, hey, what happened to Unfortunate Nookie? We're just not doing that again? <laughs> and I'm like, no, dude, just hold on. I'm trying to get my uh, mental faculties together uh, in order to have the fortitude to dive into another Unfortunate Nookie story. Probably tomorrow will be another Unfortunate Nookie. Today, we've got The Judgment of Cheeseburger from Witchfinger, as I said. It is, uh, we'll call it r slash Tales of Neckbeards, but actually it's from a personal subreddit, r slash Red X Reads, and it is, uh, delicious looking, so let's chomp into this cheeseburger today. <laughs> we'll get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way, and then we will dive right into some of this Neckbeard stories. Cringe. The Judgment of Cheeseburger. A school bully gets his patty flipped. <laughs> We're on like such a theme of neckbeards just getting beat up and I'm here for it, man. <laughs> Obviously, I do hope that it's somebody that deserves it, but school bully, that's enough for me to say, yeah, he probably should get knocked around just a little bit. And then he learns to not bully people, maybe. So, of course, welcome back to the channel, user Witchfinger84. Glad to have you. Love your stuff. And uh, this is a pretty beefy video today, if you couldn't tell by the video length. I haven't finished recording the video at this point in time, so I can't really tell you. But <laughs> it's just my presumption from the estimated read time and uh, how much I tend to talk in the middle. So let's stop talking in the middle and jump into the tail. All right. You Mountain Dew drinking degenerates. <laughs> I'm taking a short break from my stories about crap talking neck beards and violent ex cons that beat people up to take you back to the old school. Oh, yeah. I'm old school too, man. <laughs> this is going to be like a blast from the past. This was 10 years ago in the exciting field of children's education. Yay. <laughs> Tell me how to get to Sesame Street. But don't you worry. Stories about crazy convicts that live with porn stars and beat up drug dealers and angry neckbeards insulting each other's mothers over toy soldier battles will return. <laughs> yeah, we read the toy soldier battle one. I don't know about the, the dealer, but I guess we should dive into that as well. So... If you're new here and that sounds fun to you, then you should click on my profile or something and go read all the threads or whatever. And don't forget the upvotes because you need those good boy points on Reddit for some reason that's unspecified. <laughs> so yes, user Witchfinger84 if you're interested in reading ahead. I don't know. I don't actually spend that much time on Reddit. I just came here to participate in Red X's hilarious community because I binge listen to his YouTube at work. Hey, did you know we got some podcasts too if you can't access YouTube? <laughs> I want to get this content to you in any way possible. But I definitely do appreciate you uh, whiling away your work hours with me. Not exactly safe for work content, but hey... <laughs> it doesn't really matter if the boss is cool or something like that. Or you are the boss. Are you the boss, Witchfinger? Can you get me some, some free stuff? <laughs> I'd appreciate it. Anyways, 
The story we're going to talk about today isn't about Dorito-dusted euphoric fedora enthusiasts or former child actors that may or may not have allegedly killed someone, <laughs> but it is a neckbeard-adjacent topic that is fun for the whole family. It's good for the kids, it's good for the adults. Today we're going to talk about psychological manipulation and bullying. Oh god. I hope that it doesn't get too heavy, but it is something that needs to be talked about. I don't think bullying is as big a deal as it was when, uh, presumably Witchfinger and I were going to school, but it does still happen. And hopefully we can equip ourselves with some anti-bullying tools from this toolbox today. Specifically, a common theme in most of my stories, thanks to good old Snowman, who we haven't read about quite yet, a bully will be subject to hilariously violent retribution and instant karma, which we all get to watch, which is just beautiful. So watch and learn, noobs! You're about to get schooled by a pro. Oh yeah, old schooled by a pro. An old pro? I don't want to go there. <laughs> We're not bringing age into this. I think Witchfinger and I are uh, roughly the same age. But yes, to set the stage, the time was 10 years ago in Incheon, Korea. Oh, right next door. Hey, how you doing, neighbor? <laughs> I'm teaching English and living in a roach motel in a seedy little neighborhood called Hambuk Mall. I'm probably butchering those names. I apologize. <laughs> My apartment is basically just a shit stack on top of a Domino's pizza franchise. And at night, black vans run up and down the street picking up and dropping off girls. Oh my god, you in the seediest part of town. The red light district, except the red lights are our brake lights from the windowless vans. <laughs> I think that makes it even worse. You can probably tell from that sentence that yes, these girls are prostitutes. And yes, my gracious hosts in Korea spared no expense on the accommodations of their foreign guests. Who are you going to complain to? <laughs> You take what you can get at a certain point, I guess. Which, I honestly don't blame them for any of that, because as you're about to learn, I'm not really a good teacher. <laughs> Refreshing honesty. In a crappy Roach Motel apartment in a wharfside red light district is probably about what the quality of education I'm serving up is worth. Oh, you just undersell yourself like that? Come on, man. At the very least, it's worth paying for, so, uh... Put that on your resume. <laughs> Fortunately, Korea is pretty goddamn safe. Even the absolute crappiest parts of Korea are pretty goddamn safe. I once saw a police officer politely ask a drunk to get into the back of his cop car so he could take him down to jail and gently and compassionately throw him into the drunk tank for the evening. No charges pressed? Yeah, I guess I could do that. Someplace warm to sleep? I'll take you up on that. <laughs> I'd rather live in a shady Korean red light district than, say, anywhere in South Chicago, which is the absolute scariest place that I have ever been in my life. And I've been in some pretty dark alleys in Bangkok, and I currently live in a pretty sketchy neighborhood in Long Beach. Yeah, it seems to happen basically anywhere you go. There are shady neighborhoods. I don't know why you keep deciding to live in them, Witchfinger. <laughs> is this just, like, a money issue or... Perhaps you, uh, live with a, a sense of danger. Danger is my middle name. <laughs> danger is my middle name. <laughs> oh, man. Safety is worth paying for, okay? You need to get up and out. Not that I'm probably the poster child for that. I mean, some parts of the Philippines are pretty wild, but at least I have found my, my little sanctuary in a small town here. But anyways, the company that I was teaching for was Avalon. Ooh, what a name. Among the English second language teaching community, folks generally have this to say about Avalon. Uh, they pay on time. <laughs> and what else can you really ask for in a job? That is about the extent of the positive vibes that people get from this particular employer. Avalon is one of the biggest Hagwon franchise chains in Korea. Super corporate, super suspect, and super greedy. If you have any family or friends back in Korea, do them a favor and tell them not to send their kids to Avalon because it is an absolute garbage tier Hagwon. Which is a word that keeps coming up, so I gotta look up what it is. 
Hagwon is the Korean language word for a for-profit private institute, academy, or cram school prevalent in South Korea. So yes, not specifically an English school. Good to note. And right as I go to Google it, uh, <laughs> OP throws the definition at me. God, I need to read ahead. <laughs> okay, great. So what is a Hagwon? Well, Hagwon are after-school cram academies that children get dropped off at to study. Your Korean parents, who typically work brutal 10 to 12 hour days, throw you on a bus at 3 o'clock to go to another school after your first school. And they pay for this because they need someone to babysit you while they're at work. And also, you know, they love you and want you to learn English so you can have more opportunities in your life. At least, yeah, this was on the slogan. I don't know if I really buy any of that. But it is a different culture, you know. It sounds like Korean work culture is even more unhealthy than American work culture, which is an achievement in itself, honestly. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's how they see it, at least. Like I said, that's what the slogan says. The way that you see it, you miserable, ungrateful little shit, is that you've got another three hours of school tacked on to your already full day of school, and why the hell did your parents even have kids if they were never even going to be around to raise them? Now you're stuck in a classroom all afternoon with some degenerate vagabond foreigner that doesn't even speak Korean, and somehow you're expected to learn English from this barely trained, technically educated, sad excuse for a passport-toting alcoholic. <laughs> God, dude! That paints such a picture. Wow! So yes, uh, the kids aren't excited to be there. It seems like OP's not really excited to be there. <laughs> it's just a mess in the making already. By the way, your first clue that Hagwons are crappy schools is that their bar is so low that they'll hire people like me. <laughs> Come on, you've got to be educated in some form or fashion, right? They didn't just pick you off the street or else every neckbeard within a 5,000 mile radius would be cramming themselves into Korea. There's some sort of process, isn't there? Please God, tell me there's a process. <laughs> Your second clue is that they'll happily take your parents' money and cram you into a classroom the size of a living room in a two-bedroom apartment with 29 other kids and then somehow expect you to magically learn something. Yeah, osmosis. <laughs> You're sitting around these other kids, just get all the same brainwave. There you go. But don't worry, you won't learn anything at all. Not if I have anything to say about it. Oh, the hero that we desperately need. <laughs> One of my favorite crimes against teaching was letting kids watch Beavis and Butthead cartoons. <laughs> Have you ever let a six-year-old watch Beavis freak out and turn into Cornholio? <laughs> I am Cornholio. I need picada for my bunghole. Uh, because it is comedy gold. <laughs> they love that shit. I take full responsibility for corrupting Korean Gen Z. <laughs> I need TV for my bunghole. <laughs> yeah, they learned some words. That's fine. <laughs> Dying, dude. Oh, it's beautiful. Now, there were a couple of things that kept me from taking this job too seriously, and I'll list them in order. The first is that Korean bosses are basically bitch-made, and they expect their subordinates to bow their heads and take abuse from them. Or maybe it was just my boss. I mean, I shouldn't speak for Korea's entire work culture. I'm sure there are some managers in some industries that aren't complete trash. But because the expectation in a lot of Korean offices is that your boss owns you, and he can just smack you up whenever he wants, a lot of these guys are soft and have gotten used to their employees being doormats. If you literally just give one of these Lilliputian men some unwavering eye contact, you can back them all the way down and walk all over them yourself. Fair dues, as far as I'm concerned. Short of firing me, there wasn't much that he could do to intimidate me. <laughs> Got him. Who's wearing the pants now, big boy? <laughs> Second point, I actually really like kids. And I think it's immoral and cruel to waste a child's childhood because you never get that back. 
So therefore, I thought the idea of sending a kid to a second school after they had already been in school all day was basically borderline criminal. So I like to give my brats plenty of opportunities to screw around and, you know, actually be children. Not what they're paying you for, but you do make a good point, you know? Maybe just bring them in some, some Play-Doh or something like that. It's gonna blow their minds when they see Play-Doh, especially the one that smells good. Oh man, <laughs> that's next level. Uh, the third point is, yeah, I I'm a bad person. I wouldn't strike a child to discipline them because frankly, not only is that abuse, but negative reinforcement doesn't work. But also because I'm a manipulative dude, <laughs> and I like to entertain myself by watching a bunch of manipulative kids be manipulative to each other and, you know, just kind of egging the whole thing on. Now this one I don't know if I can sign off on because you're supposed to be the authority figure. It's kind of got some nasty vibes of like the bourgeois beard OP who definitely wasn't popular for this exact reason, bringing other people in to, to play some sort of sick mind game with them. And they're kids, which makes me double down on that point. So, yeah, I'm not uh, with you on point three at all. Points one and two, all right, I could dig it. <laughs> but point three, you lost me completely. But OP admits that, yeah, I'm basically crazy uncle material. I basically won't ever have kids of my own, but I do love them. And I will come to every birthday party your kid has. And I'll even buy them that Red Rider BB gun they want for Christmas that your wife absolutely does not want them to have. That's me, the bad influence fun uncle, being paid to be a fun uncle. I, I can, I can kind of dig that though. <laughs> a red ride, a BB gun, you shoot your eye out. Well, kids need to shoot their eye out. You learned a hard lesson today, didn't you? So yeah, that's me, your OP, in a nutshell, the fun uncle, screw around English teacher, and I am in a middle school class full of preteens. The biggest mess around in this class is a kid that we will call Cheeseburger. <laughs> it's such an American name for a Korean kid. What's about this? Yeah, when they were handing out names, some fat person just went down the line and named all the kids after fast food. <laughs> there was Cheeseburger, Milkshake, French Fries. Personally, I didn't think it was really cool to give kids dumb English nicknames like that because not only was it dehumanizing, but imagine one of these poor kids going to America one day as a tourist and telling everyone that his American name is Cheeseburger. <laughs> and I am Cheeseburger. <laughs> That's not cool, man. Well, actually, milkshake and french fries don't deserve that treatment, but Cheeseburger honestly probably did. I don't know, OP. It seems like your predecessor had the same sense of humor. He's just like, I'm the fun uncle. Your name's Cheeseburger. <laughs> I don't know if you can look too far down your nose at that guy for naming those kids that. Because if he didn't, then I'm sure you would have, right? I just got to cause it like I sees it. Anyway, your boy Cheeseburger was a real screw up. And by that, I mean he was messing around even by my abominably loose standards. You gotta be a real smooth brain for me to think that you're a fuck up because I sit on Reddit at night typing up stories about porn star caterers and crackhead child actors that beat up muggers on trains. What a wonderful YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, boy, you called me out. The only thing worse than typing those stories up is being the one that sits here and reads them for a living, contributing nothing else to society <laughs> except these stories. Oh my god. This is getting so meta. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not even sure how to process it. Uh, it's fair dues. It's fair dues. <laughs> Good call, OP. So anyways, Cheeseburger was just a little shit. He sat in the back of the class and did literally nothing. Like, aggressively did nothing. I would hand out worksheets or tell the kids to open their book to page number, blah, 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 blah. And this kid would be sitting there staring into space with his hands on his desk and nothing out in front of him. Yeah, he's been in school all day. Give him a break. He doesn't want to be here. <laughs> Nobody wants to be here. Let's watch more Beavis and Butthead. Let's chill out a little bit. Go home, teach your parents what a cornholio is. <laughs> now, I'm not mad that Cheeseburger was a criminal. 
I'm mad that he was a sloppy criminal. If he had just put minimal effort into pretending that he was actually working. Just enough to make it seem like he was doing something, anything, for the security camera's sake. I mean, I would have let him get away with murder. <laughs> but he wasn't. He didn't. He refused. He couldn't even exercise the bare minimum of classroom don't give a damn stealth mode that even the most degenerate 19 year old fresh out of high school sailor could muster up. Cheap shot, is that coming at me? Because I, I, I accept that 100%. That was a horrible sailor. I think I was about on the same level as Cheeseburger. All of the RDCs knew that I did not give a single damn. At the little graduation ceremony, they're handing out the Navy ball caps and turning in the recruit ball caps. And I remember my RDC pulling me aside and saying, hey, I didn't think you'd make it, Dayton. And I said, neither did I. <laughs> I don't know why you guys just let me pass through, but all that was their mistake, as they would come to later find out. But that's a story for another day. I accept that cheap shot. <laughs> it's not even that cheap, to be honest. Of course, Cheeseburger being a little terrible at being a little terrible wasn't his only problem. If he wanted to be an immature little piece of crap to me, then okay, I could handle that because I have been an immature big piece of crap on this earth three times longer than he has. There is not a game he knows that I did not invent. I am Master Blaster and I run Barter Town. <laughs> Oh man, the references in here. I'll tell you, which finger has been around the block a time or two. <laughs> but unfortunately, he was being a little shit specifically to Lucy. And, well, friends, Lucy was my heart. You can't have a crush on the students. Get out of here! <laughs> nah, Lucy was the sweetest girl that you've ever seen. A cute little munchkin. It'd be a miracle if she grew up to be taller than five foot two. She was adorable. She was neat and clean and an obedient and diligent student. A prodigal English second language speaker and frankly, she was such a delightful little ball of sugar and spice and everything nice that she made even a degenerate vagabond like me actually give enough of a damn to do my job and actually try to get her some kind of quality education. That's a fine line to walk. It's like being a suck-up without being a suck-up. So good job, Lucy. <laughs> That's a skill that will serve you well in the uh, work culture of Korea, I'm sure. <laughs> so there's just one problem here. Lucy was the runt of the class. She was smarter and better than all of the other kids, and she was younger than them too. She was one of those child prodigies that makes you feel inadequate because they graduated from high school at 12 years old and finished college by the time they're 17 while you're sitting at a frat party like a jackass at 20 years old trying to sink some ping pong balls into some cheap beer cups to make some co-ed take her bra off. <laughs> That's suspiciously specific, but yeah, I think we've all been there at one point or another. Good times. Good times. Although I never really felt inadequate. <laughs> I'd see people graduate college at 17 and I'm like, don't worry about it. I'll catch up later. <laughs> and uh, I guess I kind of did. I got a couple Facebook messages from like Navy and college peers that are absolutely shocked that I found <laughs> a job that suits me. I use job in the, the loosest sense. <laughs> so yeah, it took me a couple decades, but, but I caught up. That's all right. <laughs> and I got that Cohen to take her bra off. So don't sweat it. <laughs> Friends, I'm not a fan of child prodigies. As I mentioned earlier, I think kids should be kids. And they should spend their time building Legos and playing cops and robbers before life kicks the hell out of them. And they turn into hopeless art school screw-ups like me. I don't know, maybe they like it. <laughs> Or maybe it's all that they've been offered. If you gave them a choice, I'm sure they'd choose Legos. Putting a sweet little girl into an advanced class full of kids that are older than she is is a recipe for poor childhood social experiences. And it's even worse when she is smarter than all of them and throwing the curve for the class. Do you have to grade on a curve? Is that like set by Avalon? I want to grade them all as an individuals, okay? Everybody got an A. Great job. Let's go watch some more Beavis and Butthead. 
<laughs> Lucy and Cheeseburger hated each other. They were like oil and water. Frankly, I think Cheeseburger was just a lazy bully that went for the easiest target, and Lucy, well, Lucy was my sweet little darling sugar fairy. <laughs> You're way too invested into this kid. But I don't know, I guess I can see it. She's young, she's smart, she's uh, getting picked on. Yeah, we must protect her at all costs. But Lucy also had a freaking hilarious sadistic streak. And now we're getting to the part of the story where OP reveals what a manipulative dude he really is and all the dominoes start to actually fall into place. So Lucy had this vinyl lanyard that was about 18 inches of plastic cord looped over on itself on her key ring that she kept in her pocket. In a pinch, Lucy would yank her keys out, ball them up in her little baby girl fist, and then whip the hell out of whoever had screwed with her with that lanyard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not quite a metal Sailor Moon pencil case, but it'll do in a pinch. Ah, <laughs> oh, god damn, was that funny. And oh yeah, I let it happen. On the daily. you think people would learn not to mess with Lucy after a couple of lanyard lashings. <laughs> Cheeseburger was fond of antagonizing Lucy while she was minding her own business, you know, actually doing her classwork from all the way on the other side of the room. He would just say crap to her in a normal, full volume, indoor voice across the classroom, and he thought he was so smart, and he was getting away with murder because he knew that the teacher uh, couldn't speak Korean. Well, Cheeseburger was gonna learn that day that one of the consequences of his actions was that sometimes people punish your bad behavior by allowing you to suffer the consequences of your own actions. Cheeseburger thought that just because I couldn't speak Korean, I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> Duh. Body language. Tone. There's a million things that you can use to tell what's going on without directly speaking the language. I don't speak fluent Tagalog, but I can fake it well enough. <laughs> At least just standing there listening to a conversation. So, let me tell you why that's bullcrap. As any ginger hobo, road pirate, or teenage navy man child. <laughs> yeah, it was a cheap shot day. You cold-blooded OP. I mean, I don't even identify with the navy bit anymore. That's like a full decade ago. <laughs> don't worry about it. And the man child bit, I uh, humbly accept 100%. I keep my bills paid. That means definitely more man than child. <laughs> so don't sweat it. Say what you will. So yes, as either of us would tell you, crap talk is uh, not a language, it's really a tone of voice. It's universal, and you don't need to understand that the words that someone is saying to know that they are talking crap, because it is basically the foundation of the Tower of Babel. Yeah, tone, body language, reactions of the people around you. There's <laughs> you hardly need to speak the language to know what's going on. So, whenever Lucy eventually tired of this, she would get up out of her chair and went over to whip the hell out of Cheeseburger with her lanyard. <laughs> well, I just stood at my podium and allowed nature to take its course. <laughs> Naturally, of course, I didn't derive any amusement from this. No, sir. That would be wrong. I would never take joy in the ironic punishment of someone who desperately deserved a steaming pot of instant karma. Nope, not me. Shard and fraud? Mm, never heard of her. <laughs> See, now OP is delivering enough information that we could throw the cheap shots right back at him. So yes, I'm really enjoying this story about an inept teacher who was also the proprietor of a Korean child <laughs> fight club. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it sounds cooler than it is. It's not really a cheap shot. Anyways, Cheeseburger would say some mean thing in Korean to incite Lucy, and then Lucy would get up out of her chair, walk down the aisle, and then whip out her lanyard and start lashing the baby fat <laughs> around Cheeseburger's waist and thighs, and he would scream like a stuck pig. Whap! Thwack! Whack! <laughs> teacher, stop her! Why, teacher? <laughs> yeah, 
he would scream as if I didn't know that he 100% deserved exactly what he was getting. So, because I'm fundamentally just a hyena on two legs wearing a cheap tie, I'd play along for shits and gigs. Lucy, would you come up here please? I would ask. Yes, teacher! Lucy would sing with her angelic, precious little girl voice, as if she wasn't just beating the hell out of someone like a dominatrix. Lucy, please bring me your work, I'd ask her. Lucy would dutifully return to her desk, retrieve her English worksheet, and bring it back to me. Everything was immaculate. Perfect. Gold star sticker, banana sticker. 10 out of 10. <laughs> Lucy was mathematically and linguistically incapable of doing wrong. I'd put a 100 or a check plus plus or a big fat A or a banana sticker on her paper or whatever the hell it was the teachers were doing at the time. And then, 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 then I'd go take a wander on down to Cheeseburger's desk in the back and see what he had for me. And I was never disappointed by his abundance of disappointment. Without fail, Cheeseburger would have done literally nothing. I don't just mean he got everything wrong or scribbled in some half-assed answers, or it was only three questions into the worksheet even though the class had been on it for ten minutes. I mean, he didn't even have his pen out on his desk. He didn't even have his name on the paper. <laughs> He's aggressively lazy, like, part of me has to respect that. If you weren't a bully, I would give you props for being so committed to being lazy. Like I said, friends, I don't mind a criminal. What I don't like are sloppy criminals. He could have at least tried to not try or cheated off his buddy. Oh, he's got friends. <laughs> How is this kid ever going to survive in society when he couldn't even properly sandbag his way into mediocrity? Cheeseburger, you don't even have your name on your sheet yet, I told him. Oh, teacher, uh, sorry. Sorry, I'm so sorry. He would start kissing my ass and frantically running through his backpack to pull out a pen that should have been on his desk the minute the bell rang at the very start of class. What the hell's the deal with this? He ain't even like a real bully. At least real bullies in high school try to punk the teacher as well. He's, he's just apologizing profusely. <laughs> oh, that's pathetic. Cheeseburger, my boy. Lucy here is already done with the assignment and she got a perfect score, I said softly in my best pretending to give a damn teacher voice. She speaks perfect English, she's quiet, does everything that I tell her, gets perfect scores, and you, you don't even try hard enough to, to even fake it. Frankly, I'm offended that you don't even respect me enough to try and sneak one past me. You're just all the way out, wiling out, like you think you're hot shit or something. And Cheeseburger let that sink in for a moment. And yeah, I did dumb it down enough for him to understand it. Cheeseburger, given those choices and you disrupting my class, who do you think I'm going to pick every single time? I asked. Uh, 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 my teacher. <laughs> Have I not demonstrated to you that I don't actually care about you as a person? Lucy, are you finished with your assignments? I asked, my darling little precious big brain baby. <laughs> it's so disturbing, dude. Y'all gonna get married or something like that? You gotta end up in jail, for real. <laughs> this is so, like, on the cusp of being not okay. Yes, teacher, she sang. Did you finish all your work for your other classes as well? I asked my adorable perfect princess. Of course, teacher, Lucy sang. Huh, well, I guess we're just out of stuff for you to do then, I shrugged. I turned around and started my slow walk from Cheeseburger's desk back to my podium. I still had five minutes of assignment time left on that stupid worksheet to kill, which honestly was Cheeseburger's problem, not mine. Lucy. I said. Yes, teacher, my dutiful little enforcer answered. Put the boots to him. Medium style. <laughs> Put the boots to him. Medium style.
<laughs> and after all the talk of banana stickers, we get a Metalocalypse reference right at the end. Mwah! Beautiful! <laughs> you gotta love that! <laughs> God damn, dude. So yeah, all things considered, pretty interesting story with a lot of side tangents, which when combined with my side tangent means we had about like five minutes of story <laughs> over the course of 40 minutes, which is beautiful. I wouldn't have it any other way, honestly. I think that OP dislikes cheeseburgers so much because OP uh, sees a bit of himself, you know? It's pretty obvious he's a somewhat lazy dude who doesn't enjoy his job. And he sees Cheeseburger uh, also not enjoying it, but having the balls to just, like, outright not enjoy it. And be like, look, I'm not gonna do any of this stuff. <laughs> like I said, you gotta kind of show some respect to Cheeseburger, despite him being a, a loser. He's got that much commitment to being a loser that I'm kind of like, yeah, maybe I'll come around. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I respect people that work hard more than anybody else, which is why OP cheap shots don't bother me too much. <laughs> is that a cheap shot? Yeah, maybe it is. But overall, what I wish for more than anything out of this story is like, you know, uh, a video log of all this happening. This tiny little four foot girl beating the crap out of some bully dude with a lanyard. <laughs> Uh, that's too funny, man. Paints quite a picture, and ah, I would love to be there to see that. It's no wonder that it has stuck with you, OP, for as long as it has, and I thank you for sharing it with us. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, I hope you like, comment, and or subscribe. Yes, indeed. Maybe share the video around if you should like. I'm pretty sure this is a one-off, so, you know, you don't have to commit or anything. You just post it on the timeline, and that's it. A plus, big brain time, banana stickers everywhere. <laughs> We've also got links in the description, plugs, playlists, and podcasts. Hey, this is going to go up on podcast services ASAP, so you can get it on Spotify, CastBox, Deezer, whatever the hell you use. <laughs> We've also got my social medias down there, Twitter, Discord, Facebook, hooray! Come on through, say hello, I would appreciate it. We've also got my Patreon and my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons. I'd like to thank them Jerry, Jerry much, as I do every video. So thank you, Robert Waits, Jarhead Jerry, Oorah, Logan Wolf, arr, arr, TSM Kirby, blah, 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 Conrad Inge, Jeremiah was a net weird. <laughs> Is that <laughs> Jeremiah was a bullfrog? Jeremiah was a neckbeard. I think that's how it's supposed to go. <laughs> Captain Clown Jerry, Hong Kong, Aaron W, Twisted Child, Cinema Susie, for old Lang Syne. God, it's so close to the New Year's, isn't it? Fire Drake, Giggle Jerry, hee hee, are you Jerry? The most different Jerry spelling and happy new Jerry. <laughs> Jerry the Pirate. <laughs> Olivison loves Jerry. So does Red X. Rogue Silent Revolver. The original Jerry. Jerry. Becca. Jerish Kitsune. Little Lone Wolf. Matthew Simmons. Satori. 211 Jerry. The Return of Jerry. A bundle of Jerry's a couple for your toes. <laughs> a Jerry, a Jungle in Jerry's. A Justy Dragonia Jerry. A Lunia Demonista. <laughs> Althea Blue. Anunnaki. Assassin Pug Jerry, Atheist Jerry, Aurora Wildheart, Grizzly, Bailey Joy, Bearded Jerry, watch out for that guy, Bitch Gremlin, Blade the Hero, Blameless Fish, Blip Bloop Jerry, but Jerry, it's cold outside. It was, it's getting hot, man. Philippines, woo. <laughs> Camille Sarah, Commander J. Tank, Dennis Dayton, Dinosaur Nightlight, Disposable Waifu, Aaron Lennox, Frozen Over Studios, Go Go Jerry Rangers, You Mighty Bearded Marble Rolling Jerry Rangers, aka uh, Mr. J. That's Mr. J. <laughs> Gypsy, Hadrian BR, Heathcliff, I'm Slim Jerry, yes, I'm the Slim Jerry, all you other Slim Jerry's. Are oh no, the real Jerry, I messed it up. Never mind, let's go. <laughs> Itchy nuts, just scratch it, bro. A pimp named Jay Crisp, J.M. Coon, Jennifer Shaver, Jerry Blacktail, Jerry Jerry Barberry, Banana Fanna for Fairy, Fee Five More Mary, Jerry. <laughs> Jerry, that's more Jerry than the other Jerry's. Jerry the Outlaw Mother Trucker, Honk Honk, John Hero, John Jerry Jingleheimer Schmidt. <laughs> hey, that's my name too. Uh, Jolly Black Jerry, Simboofa, cause if you're boofing it's free, K Jerry W, Kajow, Crew He, Miss Monday, Lord Jerryo, Leader of the Thunder Jerry's, Thunder Jerry's, ho! 
Milady Dex. Jerry Rip for her pleasure, even though she won't appreciate you. Nice guys unite in a nest of crusty coom socks and pee <laughs> uh, Oh, thanks. I hate all of that. <laughs> Marvel Jerry for the well-being and rehabilitation of Red X's brother, Blue X. Yeah, if he ever gets out of jail. <laughs> God, now I'm depressed. Jack's Rule, Melgarth and Story, Mr. Carrot 797, God of Veggies, Natari, Nightmare Jerry, or Gabby Jerry Steve, congrats on the marriage. Panda Prince Jerry, patron saint of chicken nuggies, Saint Jerry, Rahman. Phantom of the Pines, Jerrykins and Jerry Beth, Ramtide Lacrimates, Rose Jerry Miller, <laughs> TSM Kirby, Sarita the Lolita, Saucy Octopus, oh so saucy, welcome to the fold, <laughs> Serrated Ash, Staples aka Jerry Yeet, Stephanie Goodner, Synaptic Boomstick, Brilliant Tamago, Teddy the Police, Tenta Monster, the One True Fusky, Tom, Buddhist the Jerry on the inside, the Counts, Church, Church, Treeberg, <laughs> Vigil Anti Justice, <laughs> Viking Jerry, what does the beard say? <laughs> <laughs> Will Max, Comrade Moody, Kira, Euro Wizard Jerry, Redwin, Goose says Honk, Geriatric, <laughs> Naga Viper, Cy Jerry, the Cyborg, Saint's Blessing, a normal Jerry, a Jerry without his marble, still a Jerry, but what is said marble without his Jerry? Yeah, if a tree falls in the forest or something like that. <laughs> Hunter of Jerry's, Devourer of all things tasty, it is Tom! Watch out! Admiral T. Tank, Leader of the Tom Army, I do think. Alunia, Amara, Atomic Jerry Ziller, Breaker of the Tom Army. AZ, Babsy Coon, Banished Knight, Barbushka's Radiator Jam, Broken Spine Horseradish, Cake Jerry. That's the original different Jerry. <laughs> California Jerry Girl, yeah. Canadian Lynx, Chevron 7, Locked, Ch -ch -ch Chia Jerry. <laughs> Chris Mesca, Cinnamon Bunny Dog, Corporal Admiral, Princess Furry Warrior, Woo Jerry. Cryptidies, Cuba Jerry, the Fawn Jerry. Did you ever hear the tragedy of Darth Thomas the Wise? I thought not. It's not a story that Jerry would tell you. <laughs> uh, oh God, dopamine dangerous. Yeah, dopamine overdose over here. Electrical Fennec, Ghost of Alpha, give her both inches. <laughs> he cannot. He cannot. You pronounce that. The K, Mr. X. Okay, he cannot. It's like he cannot. But except that I can. That's why I always pronounce it wrong. Boom! Got him! HMT Mayor. Holy Berry Jerry. Hydra Jerry. Jeffrey. Jeffrey. My name's Jeffrey. <laughs> Jerry and Tom versus Santa Wear Be Apocalypse. Jerry in the Subaru STI. Not a sponsor. <laughs> Jerry Jerry Binks <laughs> Jerry's evil twin brother Terry <laughs> uh, The Jerry verse is growing so strong I'm gonna tell you that <laughs> Jerry Aldo Rivera <laughs> Check out the mustache Jerry Bean Yum Jerry Roxas Yay JRPG that's Jerry role playing game aka bloody butterfly gaming of course, we got judge, jury, and executioner, jury, Jerry, <laughs> King Tom, smasher of Jerry Zillas. These are my monkeys. This is my circus. That's right. Get it right. Kids again, craft a kitty cat, life of a guardian, little Ann woods, Lucia Lovecraft. Maybe next time, Midnight Sun, Milk Fed Gimp, <laughs> Miss Touches, Not Invisible Angel, One Leg Jerry, hopping into the new year, aren't we all? Or get me Cam, Ghosty, Raptor Art, Red X, Dive into Jerry. What a great <laughs> slogan. <laughs> We might have to adopt that. She's my Jerry Pie. Go drink a Mountain Dew or the big surprise. Cringe so good, make a grown man cry. Sweet Jerry Pie. <laughs> Smitty Warbin Jägerman Jensen. <laughs> you thought you'd get me with that, but I know about that. Snary the Snom Jerry. Spoony the Rogue. Steampunk Ellie. The Necro Jerry Con. The original Jerry. Not. To Infinite Jerry and beyond, definitely. Tuna Fish Jerry, Aquarium Escapee, <laughs> Zestaboo Jerry, Tom Promise Jerry, Swizz, uh, oh no bad Jerry, Tom be a good boy, no Swizz, just facts, totally psyched, go look it up, and buy it, 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 buy
<laughs> it's not even words I just made. Oh, and also thank you to my $1 patrons. Beautiful people that they are. Holy heckers, you guys. It's almost the end of the month. Patreon's just been blowing up. Life is really, really cool. So thank you guys for supporting. Obviously, I hope that some more people will consider supporting. But if you can't do it right now, I mean, don't sweat it too hard. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me. And I hope that you come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. Because, you know, the views is how my beard stays so buttery, buttery. <laughs> In order to do so, you'll need to keep yourself safe out there, wash your hands, but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Maybe like, uh, watching some Ored X videos. Ah, big brain play. <laughs> Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I shall see you in the next one, and until then, bye bye